Hello everyone, good afternoon. Dr. Barry here for your board certified internist, the founder of The Lunch Learn with Dr. Barry. Obviously this uh, video blog, the podcast, and of course you know the founder of drpiersblog.com. First of all, welcome. You know, it's been, I think it's been a few weeks. Uh, you know, we've been uh, fortunately kind of, unfortunately we've been busy here in South Florida, especially with uh, the recent hurricane and uh, dealing with that from a, a hospital uh, stand up. That's it was actually a lot more work than expected. Again, for those who may know, um, you know, I've been following me. Yes, I've, you know, I'm all hospital medicine out right now. So uh, I was on te- what we call Team B, which is pretty much like the support team for uh, the hospital. And pretty much, you know, it's been busy ever since uh, Monday. So you know, right, right after that Monday, you know, we, I've been pretty much working straight through. In fact, tomorrow is going to be the first day off. Um, since you know the the passing of the hurricane, so definitely excited about tomorrow just to get some time off. But today we're going to be talking about rheumatoid arthritis, and it was something that I want to kind of bring up. Why? Because in the hospital outpatient setting, uh, it's something that kind of gets misconstrued a lot. So I definitely wanted to kind of you know put it out there so we had a clear understanding of what like rheumatoid arthritis is, right? Because I used to have a lot of my patients, especially in my office, where you know when they're doing their history of physical and they're checking off, and they'd always check off, yeah, I have rheumatoid arthritis, right? Because when we think about arthritis, we always just assume that oh yeah, yes, I have arthritis, and we just see the word rheumatoid, and we don't really think much of it, right? And the majority of people I can say, and we, I think we've talked about this on prior uh, lunch alerts, have osteoarthritis, right? But when we talk about rheumatoid arthritis, that's a whole different beast in and of itself. So when my patients would come and they would check off rheumatoid arthritis, first thing I would do is look at their medications. If I don't see certain medications on there, I'm pretty sure, you know, they likely don't have rheumatoid arthritis. If I do like my physical exam and I don't see, uh, you know, those certain physical exam features that are usually associated with patients with rheumatoid arthritis, I'm pretty sure that they don't have rheumatoid arthritis, right? So today we're going to be learning about rheumatoid arthritis. We're going to get the nice, quick and skinny of it. And, you know, we're going to be able that way by the end of this uh, video, right, you'll know uh, a person who has rheumatoid arthritis, you'll know a person who has osteoarthritis, and you'll know like there's a clear, you know, clear division down the line of which one kind of stands. So when we talk about arthritis in general, um, we think most of the term of, you know, joint pain, right? Arthritis is pretty much, from a definition standpoint, inflammation of the joint. But your patients who have osteoarthritis, which is, again, much more common than uh, we, do, we know of, right? Those patients tend to have, you know, they wake up with joint pain. But usually after about, you know, half an hour or so, you know, they're able to, they, their joint, quote, unquote, stiffness kind of goes away and they're able to kind of do their thing. But then you have your patients with arthritis, especially due to, from a rheumatoid standpoint. And that's a whole different ball game, right? Because those are the type of patients who... They wake up with joint pain. 30 minutes later, they still got joint pain. An hour later, they still got a joint pain. So it's a joint pain that does not seem to go away. And from a, just a general definition, we like to think about rheumatoid arthritis as a, a chronic inflammatory disease, right? So it's a chronic disease. It's chronic inflammation. It actually affects a lot of your joints, right? For most of the people, when we talk about rheumatoid arthritis, the joints that become infected are that their hands, right? Their hands or their feet, right? Those are the, the big ones when we talk about. But now, osteoarthritis affects the hands as well, but it's like a certain characteristic for patients who have rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, when they get it, you're like, oh yeah, you definitely have rheumatoid and nothing else, right? So, and what I'll do is under the, under the comments of this video, I'll actually post out, um, I'll actually post out a video, uh, post out a couple pictures of, you know, rheumatoid versus osteoarthritis. In fact, you know, we'll do a play like a little game. I'm going to have a couple pictures. I'm going to let you kind of choose which one's osteo, which one's rheumatoid, right? So we can uh, make sure, like, we're all clear of what's going on um, from that standpoint there, right? So you have rheumatoid arthritis. It's this chronic inflammatory disease, and uh, there's a lot of different risk factors associated with it. Uh, but when we talk about risk factors, we're talking about age. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis tends to affect older individuals. Um, so you have some patients who, when they're 30, 40, 50, is the first time they even get diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. And uh, gender is a, a big risk factor as well for rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis, and then, you know, of course, my women are probably are pretty very well aware of this, is that it affects 
women two to three times as much as it does for men, right? And there's some, gen and again, when I talk, when we talk about rheumatoid arthritis, it's a genetic disease, right? So, for for something in the genes, something in the hormones, that women are much more affected uh, rheumatoid arthritis than they are with uh, osteoarthritis, right? Or just in general, right? Like if you have osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, you're three times as likely to have it if you're a woman than you are a man, right? Just to give you an idea. Um, patients who smoke, smoking is a big risk factor for patients who have, for patients who are smokers uh, when they're young or, you know, you they just pick up smoking at 30, 40, don't know why they would, but if they, you know, if they're late bloomers, um, smoking is a big risk factor, which is, is smoking is a big risk factor for everything, but it's definitely a big risk factor for patients who are, who have rheumatoid arthritis. <laughs> And then genes, again, because it is a genetic disorder, again, so if you have mom, dad, you know, aunt, uncle, grandma, grandpa who have rheumatoid arthritis, there are genes that can be passed down to, uh, you know, point out that, like, you may have an increased chance of having rheumatoid arthritis as well. So, that, so that's, you know, from, uh, from a risk factor standpoint. So we talked about number one, uh, age. Number two, again, older people are more likely to get rheumatoid arthritis. Number two, uh, gender. Women are more likely to get rheumatoid arthritis. Number three, from a habitat habit standpoint, smokers are more likely to have rheumatoid arthritis. From a genetic familial standpoint, uh, people who have rheumatoid arthritis running in the family are also more likely to get it in, in the future. And again, like I said, I said older patients, but again, there is some forms of juvenile onset of the rheumatoid arthritis right so it is and i think a lot of that plays a more genetic factor more than anything else because rheumatoid arthritis is uh, an autoimmune disease right and if you've been following the lunch and learn you know um one of the last autoimmune diseases we talked about was sarcoidosis right so when we talk about autoimmune diseases autoimmune and you know diabetes is another form of like an autoimmune aspect uh, rheumatoid arthritis and being an autoimmune disease is that it's the body, right, attacking itself. So the body produces antibodies, which is what the body uses to kind of fight infection, but it, it doesn't recognize that, you know, this is not an infection. This is my, like, my hands, my feet, like this isn't normal. But for some reason, the body produces hormones and antibodies to fight against itself. And what it does is it actually, you know, breaks down joint, breaks down cartilage, causes a lot of pain, causes a lot of inflammation. And so, so from that standpoint, again, some, and something turns it on, right? There's been, we don't have no clear-cut theories. We some, some people think that it could be due to infection. Some people could be uh, due to, like, stress. Um, obesity has been uh, shown to have a concerning risk factor for patients with uh, rheumatoid arthritis as well. So there's a lot of different factors kind of associated with, you know, patients having rheumatoid arthritis or the onset of rheumatoid arthritis. So it's... Different factors that we kind of like think about when we're thinking about rheumatoid arthritis, and that's but being that autoimmune disease again, that's the umbrella. Again, remember, we talked about sarcoidosis, we talked about diabetes, we talked about hypothyroidism, we talked about these diseases where the body itself says, you know what, something's wrong, I'm gonna attack it, and it doesn't realize, no, I'm actually attacking myself, I'm actually attacking normal tissue, right? So that's the problem with rheumatoid arthritis because again, it's the body attacking itself. And when we talk about treatment, you'll kind of understand why the treatment has to go the way it goes. Some of the signs and symptoms, again, we uh, the obvious are joint pain, um, fatigue as well, because again, your body is in this constant state of inflammation, and that causes you to actually have anemia. So you, this constant state of inflammation, constant state of anemia, Patients are usually tired, they're fatigued. Those are some of the symptoms when they walk into their doctor's office, right? So I want you to think about, especially my patients who may be listening, you know, to these, uh, you know, these lunch and learns, and you know, thinking like, oh, you know, am I dealing with some of these problems? Uh, you know, if you've been dealing with a lot of joint pain, a lot of joint discomfort, you're always tired, always fatigued, and you really can't seem to like, you know, get over the hump of that. That's something to think about when you go into your doctor's office and you're asking these them some of these questions, right? Because your doctor needs to know if like there's certain tests that they have to do. Because there are certain tests specifically for rheumatoid arthritis versus you know patients who have just osteoarthritis. Again, remember osteoarthritis much more common. Um, almost everybody has it. It's that old person's disease. I, I think I, I did a blog post on it. Uh, I'll put I'll put a link on the comments if. Uh, you don't remember, I did a blog post or a video. I think I did a blog post or a video. I forget which one I did. There's something on that, right? Um, you know what? Oh, I can't remember if I did it. Hmm. I can't remember. You know, I do I do so much. So I can't remember which one I actually did for, for you guys. 
I think I think it was a blog post, but whatever. We're gonna we're, I'll post the link in the comments. But that's that's the case, right? But osteoarthritis is so common um, that you know we want to make sure we don't mix it up with rheumatoid arthritis, right? Because rheumatoid arthritis, the treatment course is such a different, right? So again, we talked about from the signs and symptoms again, going back, uh, joint pain, um, inflammation, weakness, fatigue. Uh, swelling of the hands, swelling of the feet, sometimes swelling of the elbows. Um, from a skin standpoint, rheumatoid arthritis can affect the skins as well. And some patients will actually develop what we call nodules, so they actually get like like hard, you know, uh, you know, masses, you know, in their skin as well, kind of associated with rheumatoid arthritis. About thirty percent of people get that. There's an increased chance for having some cardiovascular disease. So again. This is another one of those autoimmune diseases that causes subsequent problems down the line. Um, so this, for patients who have rheumatoid arthritis, you also then have to start being concerned for heart disease as well, right? So that's something else to think about when we're thinking about rheumatoid arthritis in, in our regards. When we go to diagnose it, right? So let's say you come to your doctor's office and you say, Doc, I've been having joint pain, my hands and my feet have been going on forever, you know, I take Tylenol, Ava, like all these things are not helping it, it's getting worse. What we tend to do there from a diagnostic standpoint, one of the first and easiest uh, uh, diagnostic procedures that we do, we'll just order an x-ray. We usually order x-rays of the hand, x-rays of the feet, because there's actually certain criteria that we tend to look at uh, when we're looking at these imaging centers to think about like, oh, you know what, I think you may be dealing with, you know, rheumatoid arthritis ra rather than, you know, their osteoarthritis. Again, remember, osteoarthritis, everybody got that. It's an old person disease, if you want to think about it like that way. Rheumatoid arthritis, everybody does not have that, and it's something where the body is attacking itself. So when I say the body attacking itself, when we do an x-ray of the hands, when we do an x-ray of the hands for rheumatoid arthritis, some of these patients from an x-ray standpoint, you'll actually see uh, the bone in the joint like e eroding, right? Like almost like melting because the body is attacked it so much that it starts to demineralize and shrink. And when it shrinks, it gives like these very disfigured hands, right? Again, when I post these pictures, you're going to see very quickly like, oh my God, like that's what rheumatoid arthritis looks like. Because you're going to, you see this all the time. You know, you, you guys may think like, oh man, this person's hands look crazy. But like, again, that's what happens with rheumatoid arthritis, right? The, the, jo the body attacks the joints of the hands, of the feet, elbow, a couple other things. Uh, but it attacks those joints so much that it actually will uh, break down. Uh, the tissue in there, break down the joint, and then cause it, you, you some people only almost see like a claw hands or like a disfigurement to the point where a lot of your patients on rheumatoid arthritis end up on disability. Like it's not out of the ordinary for a patient to be on room to have rheumatoid arthritis to end up on disability. Why? Because their hands and feet get so disfigured that they literally can't do what they used to do. Right. So let's think about let's think about in my profession, right, as a, a physician. Right. Imagine if I was a surgeon. Imagine if I was a surgeon and I started developing rheumatoid arthritis to the point where I could not use my hands to the point uh, to do surgery, right? Like, again, yeah, that's pretty much, you know, career ending, right? So this is, a, and again, you don't have to be a full-blown surgeon. And again, if you, if you work with your hands, you work in, uh, you know, manual labor, you do something where you need your hands, your feet to actually do it, and all of a sudden you can't. You know, a lot of your patients end up on disability just because of that, right? So uh, we definitely want to make sure we stress that, you know, rheumatoid arthritis is definitely uh, one of those diseases that we it's concerning, definitely something to always be very mindful of because it's definitely something that if, if we're not careful of it, it can cause, you know, much, much more problems down the line, right? So that's, that's your rheumatoid arthritis. And when we talk about the treatment aspect of, you know, RA and rheumatoid arthritis, is is not is not there's first of all there's no really there's no over the counter treatment right there's no over the counter treatment for your RA um, lifestyle recommendations are recommended by right? because most of these patients become they they become so debilitated that they don't want to do anything and it just kind of makes it worse right so you know we try to encourage them to do a lot of physical activity or as not a lot but as much physical activity as they can and um, because from a, 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 a treatment like a Tylenol Advil, that's not helping it, right? Tylenol Advil helps osteoarthritis because that's just inflammation, but it doesn't help the body attacking itself, right? So we actually have to give, uh, you know, actual medications that treat specifically for that. 
So, uh, you know, again, you may not be familiar with, familiar with the names, which really isn't important, especially you remember with these lunch and learns, you know, we, you know, we don't have to go too deaf into treatment unless we need to. Um, but it's a more of a just making sure we have a great overall picture of what's going on. And the overall picture of what's going on is that, you know, rheumatoid arthritis, the body is attacking itself, and I need medication that will actually stop that. So medications like methotrexate, again, for those who may have uh, f friends or family member who have, like, chemotherapy may be familiar with something like that. Uh, Plaquenil is another one. Some medications, steroids is another one. Um, from from my, for my natural patients, I have a lot of patients who like love the natural therapy. Um, there isn't any therapy that would treat rheumatoid arthritis, but remember when we talked about the pain discomfort. Uh, it, one of my like my rheumatologists love to recommend like turmeric. Turmeric is a great pain control uh, for these uh, patients as well too. Right, and again, it's not treatment. Again, I want to stress, turmeric and natural supplements are not going to treat your rheumatoid arthritis. It's not like. It's not. We can just boom, boom, stop there. It's not going to treat it, right? But it can help with the symptoms from it. It can help from the swelling and the pain and discomfort. But it's still not going to stop the fact that your body is attacking yourself, right? So you need those almost like chemotherapy type medications to get the body to stop, you know, attacking itself, right? So that's, you know, that's pretty much, you know, top to bottom from a rheumatoid arthritis overview summary, um, you know, that we want to talk about. Okay. Um, so let's just a recap again. We talked about rheumatoid arthritis. Um, we tried to stress the importance of the fact that you may have osteoarthritis, but you don't have rheumatoid arthritis, right? And this is the reason why. We know rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic disease. Um, it tends to start at later age. It tends to affect women more than men. Um, associated with smoking, associated with obesity, really associated from a genetic standpoint. Family history is very big and important here. Uh, we know it causes dis uh, swelling, fatigue, uh, weakness, uh, joint pain, of course, uh, disfigurement of the actual hands and feet because it's because it's really the body attacking itself. It's an autoimmune disease, just like sarcoidosis, just like our diabetes and everything else kind of understand from that standpoint. We know usually from a treatment standpoint that, yes, there's some labs or usually some diagnostic, just plain old x-rays is sometimes good enough to say, yeah, you have rheumatoid arthritis. So that's, that's something to think about as well, too. Again, sometimes you need just plain x-rays, but there's plenty of labs. Again, there's, there's antibodies and blood tests to like confirm. But even if those were negative, if your x-rays is positive for something that looks like rheumatoid arthritis, you likely have rheumatoid arthritis, right? So that's always something to think about. And treatment course is, you know, trying to stay physically as active as possible. Um, you know, those men, those medications that really just stop the body from attacking itself, the methotrexate, the plaquenils of the world. There's a slew of others, but they're not important. Uh, for this lecture, it's just more of a, a matter of you getting understanding, like, yeah, this is, you know, something that I got to deal with from a treatment course. So, again, uh, this is Dr. Barry, you know, Lunch and Learn, uh, with yours truly, again, appreciated. Again, you know, I want to, you know, give well wishes to everyone who, um, have been who was affected by the hurricanes um, in Houston, definitely in the Caribbean. Oh my God, the Caribbean's oh, definitely in the Caribbean, Key West, and everything else. Uh, and under the sun from that standpoint. Uh, and I'm gonna see you guys next week. I hope you like uh, our new. We're gonna start doing this on Fridays. Fridays seem to be a very good day, uh, especially here in a hospital. You know, again, I'm in a hospital, so Fridays seem to be a very good day for me to be able to kind of do this without too much interruptions. So I think we're gonna start moving all our lunch and learns on Fridays uh, for you guys, and see you guys next week again. If you haven't, this week was a pretty busy week. Um, we did the blog on the doctor. Is your doctor on social media? Check that out, drpsblog.com. Um, we did the podcast. If you have not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, I'm everywhere. Podcast. I'm on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, SoundCloud, wherever you go. Lunch and learn. Same thing. Lunch and learn with Dr. Barry. You'll see me there as well. And uh, see you guys next week, man. You guys have a great, blessed one. Um, I'm I'm working on just a sneak peek. I'm working on trying to possibly get like a neurologist because for those who may be like familiar from a, a sports standpoint you know Aaron Hernandez uh, was just diagnosed with CTE one of the most severe cases period so I'm trying to see if we can get that done for you for you guys for the podcast so stay tuned for that um, if not maybe next week you guys have a great blessed day see you later bye